Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 13th and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop, Pacific Northwest smack dab in the middle of this image. Atmospheric River now lifting northbound towards Southeast BC. And you can see our ridge developing here along the West Coast of North America. We'll take a look at what this means here through our mid and extended range of our forecast here for the Pacific Northwest as we go through the video here this morning. I am on Facebook, the link should be down below. So share with your friends and family. Now looking at avalanche.org, this provides a great service. There's cons some considerable avalanche danger out there, for example, and you can click on these individual locations and they put out a forecast here. They talk about what is going on and what the dangers are when you go across the backcountry. And the reason why I bring this up is because just recently we had two people caught and killed in an avalanche. And this happens every single year. I'm not joking. You can look back at these incidents and kind of see that as you go scroll back through the years past. So anyway, check this out before you go off into the backcountry. Just might save your life. Now look at the European model. Look at this ridge here off our coastline that really gets developed as we go on in through Thursday night and on into Friday. This is a summertime strength ridge, a lot of warm air aloft. The reason why we're not going to warm up like it's summertime, of course, because the sun's direct rays are down into the Southern hemisphere. And we're and in turn, we're going to create some nasty inversions because the weak solar insulation getting into our areas is not going to be able to warm us up into the lower elevations that much. But the, the snowpack will suffer because of this, because there's a lot of warm air aloft across the air. Area. But on the flip side of that, it's always going to it's also going to create some nice conditions for people out there hiking and getting off into the higher terrain. Once you get above the fog, there is going to be some glorious weather to do some of that hiking there. Just be careful off in the backcountry if you're around the snow. Now, this is the soundings here for Salem. You look back on in towards the summertime months and you can see that where the ridges, you know, they're, they can be pretty strong during the summertime when we're getting a heat wave and whatnot. This ridge is going to be among the 75th percentile or so of what we get in the summertime, a very strong ridge. And you can see uh, what we're normally dealing with during the month of January. But yeah, this ridge is going to be just packing a punch with some very warm air aloft. And again, the difference is the direct rays of the sun are just not strong enough to warm us up. And I mean, thankfully so during the winter months, but yeah, this is going to be mimicking a summertime ridge. Now, if we take a look at the European model and scroll through here, we have a weak system still sliding through here as we go through Wednesday, but that's not bringing precipitation to Washington, Oregon, Idaho, or Montana. Some portions of Western BC get clipped by that very weak system. But after that, we don't have any precipitation to speak of all the way through this upcoming weekend. The Seahawks game is on Saturday. There's going to be no precipitation for that and probably some, you know, pretty nice conditions for the game. The wind should be light as well. But yeah, over the six day period, no precipitation across the region outside of what's going on here for today and tomorrow across Western BC. Now looking at 5,000 feet, 850 millibars, these are the temperatures at 5,000 feet. The, the freezing line, you have to like search this out here. Look at the very warm conditions aloft and it's going to remain that way through at least the next six days. Look at this very warm air across from Western Washington, some of Oregon and California. And then you can see some colder air pass off to the east of the Rockies, still really not helping us here in the Pacific Northwest. Our snowpack is going to take a beating from this over the next couple of weeks. And we scroll all the way out towards the six day period. And you can see that warm air all the way up towards Haida Gwaii. I mean, my goodness, it does not look like January here, folks. Now, taking a look at 100 meter wind speeds, got some offshore gusty winds coming for some select locations. But again, across the higher terrain, man, if you're going to be out there this week, it's going to be some nice, glorious sunshine. But again, watch out in those avalanche prone locations and there'll be some gusty winds out there, but it shouldn't be anything too extreme. The strongest ones will be across the Columbia River Gorge here on the Washington, Oregon border. Now, looking at daily two meter maximum temperature, you can see these warm temperatures. And again, this looks like something we'd be dealing with in spring, not in mid January as we keep things quite toasty here across a lot of the locations. The only caveat to this is that we start to develop some dense fog that doesn't fully burn off during the daytime. Of course, that's going to suppress the temperatures for some of these lower elevations. Because, of course, the weak sun, like I mentioned earlier. So Stampede Pass, look at some of these temperatures here over the next few days. Uh, again, we're going to be doing some damage to the snowpack here, warming up even to the mid 50s for Stampede Pass, like Mount Baker as well, also getting pretty warm during some of these afternoon highs. You can see the temperatures drop off overnight, but then again, you're going to be melting it during the daytime. 
So if we take a look at this, I, I feel I need to address this because I see people sharing some of these maps here and they don't provide context and it just confuses people. But if we go look off into the extended forecast, see the ridge kind of dominating our weather for the next week or so. But then the GFS last night throws this wrinkle at us where it shows a major Arctic outbreak coming down across Pacific Northwest, as you can see there. And you have to throw out these individual uh, deterministic runs. This should not be just blindly shared with the public and just kind of left out there. It just confuses people. And then you can see the next deterministic runs don't show that major Arctic outbreak out there. And then people are like, well, weathermen never get it right. And it just reduces confidence. So be careful who you are listening to. And, you know, sadly to say, we have some higher profile people that run blogs around here that were sharing some of these snow maps as well that, that just does nobody any favors. Like somebody legitimately showed this yesterday. So they have no concern for the quality of the discourse. There's enough weather drama that goes on here across Pacific Northwest without just outright trolling that sometimes goes on. So, you know, I'll try to guide you through these things the, the best I can, but do check back with me daily because there is a lot of bad information out there and there are people that want to do nothing more than just stir the pot. Now, if we take a look at the artificial intelligence ensemble means, so this is basically the gold standard as you're looking off through the extended forecast. So let's see what it has to say as we go. We know this ridge is coming. It's going to keep us dry. It's going to keep us warm a lot. It hangs with us. And then you can see it starts to back this up a little bit and it brings some of this cooler air back towards Western Canada. But you can see this is not a signal you want to be just kind of uh, uh, announcing to people that some kind of Arctic outbreak is coming. That's just not the signal that it's showing. It does try to show something coming towards Western Alaska. But again, this is a way out there in the forecast. This is over, you know, this is, you're talking about 10, 14 days off into the forecast here. So anyway, we'll just check back on that daily, but there's no need to be concerned about any kind of Arctic outbreak just yet. And we'll continue to monitor for that as we go day by day. Now, uh, the ensemble mean, this is the same thing here. This is just at 5,000 feet or 850 millibars. Just kind of showing you that on the ensemble mean, a lot of that colder air stays up bottled east of the Rocky Mountains for now. So anyway, we'll watch that on a daily basis. It's not like I don't want it to happen, but I'm not going to just start announcing things based on deterministic model runs and start to you know erode the entire public trust across the, the Pacific Northwest. I mean, yeah, so whatever. I'll get off my soapbox now. Now, anyway, looking at the 15-day precipitation and Anomaly, you can see how this spigot is just shut off. I mean, look at this below normal signal all the way from Haida Gwaii, all the way down the West Coast of North America. This is over the next 15 days. So yeah, kind of an a interesting signal there showing up. I'm hoping this changes somehow. And maybe it will, who knows, but it, it doesn't, it, the models are in pretty good agreement that ridge will be with us for some time. There's the 8 to 14 day, and I don't know what the Climate Prediction Center got this for the above normal here, maybe showing some of that polar lobe activity getting into Montana, but I don't know that we're going to get above normal precipitation. You saw with everything we just looked at but again we'll keep watching it check out the patreon page hopefully you guys are having a good day uh, click like and subscribe we'll do this all again tomorrow and i will catch you guys in the next forecast